was E Pierogi by me and Ben. Welcome to the Rise Weekly Extended Review for July 18 to August 1st, 2022. On Tuesday, the 19, 34-year-old Deron Wilson was found shot in the South Shore Alley. Around 9.55 p.m., Wilson was found on the 7800 block of South Coles with a gunshot wound to the torso. Wilson was taken to the University of Chicago Medical Center where he passed away from his injuries. No further information was found on the incident of the victim. Anyone with information on this or other Chicago crimes is asked to call 311 or leave an anonymous tip at cpdtip.com. On Friday the 22nd, a South Shore shooting left one man dead and another injured. Around 3.15 p.m., the two men, ages 36 and 65, were standing on the corner of 7500 South Colfax. A person across the street opened fire on the men. The 36-year-old was struck in the body. The 65-year-old was hit in the left leg. The 36-year-old was taken to the University of Chicago Medical Center, where he was pronounced dead. The older man declined medical attention at the scene. Neither man has yet been identified. On Wednesday, July 27, 34-year-old Kenneth Bradley was killed in a shooting in South Deering. Bradley was inside a car around 1.10 a.m. on the 10600 block of South Hoxie when someone opened fire. Bradley was struck in the torso and crashed two parked vehicles. He was taken to the University of Chicago Medical Center in critical condition. He later passed away from his injuries. On Sunday the 31st, an 18-year-old and a 72-year-old man were shot in South Shore. Around 6.55 p.m., the two were near the sidewalk on the 7100 block of South Bennett when someone began opening fire. The older man was hit in the knee. The teen was struck in the leg and knee. Both were taken to the University of Chicago Medical Center and last reported in fair condition. Illinois police are investigating the death of 28-year-old Nicholas Wilson. Wilson's body was found on the 500 block of Torrance. He was pronounced dead around 5.44 a.m. on Wednesday the 20th. The cause of his death has not been listed and is currently under investigation by the Cook County Medical Examiner's Office. Wilson lived on the 6500 block of Colorado Avenue in Hammond. Anyone with information on this or other crimes in Calumet City can call 708-868-2500 or leave an anonymous tip at 708-891-7867. <clears throat> 47-year-old officer Andrew Dobda was from Hegwish, was laid to rest on Saturday the 23rd. Dabda was a Chicago Police Department sergeant who was a board member for the CPD Sergeants Union. Dabda passed away on Sunday the 17th from a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head while off duty. He was taken to Christ Medical Center where he was pronounced dead. The medical examiner's office ruled his death a suicide. Dabda was remembered as a great man who enjoyed fishing and hunting and would be greatly missed. According to his obituary, he is survived by his wife, Carla, and other relatives. Dabda's death is one among several recent suicides by Chicago police officers and the second on the southeast side. In January, Illinois State Trooper Antonio Alvarez shot himself and his estranged wife, Amanda Alvarez, on the east side. Some say the stress of policing added with limited days off have been causing additional mental health issues among officers changing their shifts, they're changing their hours, they're changing their teams, they're eliminating units. She's wrong. She's lying to you. They're lying to you. The spouses, the families, we know the truth. We live it. Today a group of aldermen on Wednesday the 20th introduced an ordinance that would provide a minimum of one day off per week for officers, give them advance notice to schedule their days off, and the ability to decline force cancellation days off. The bill would also allow officers to be paid double for more than two hours added to a scheduled shift. The bill was introduced by 41st Ward Alderman Anthony Napolitano and supported by Alderman Ray Lopez from the 15th Ward, Matthew O'Shea from the 19th Ward, and Silvana Tiberis from the 23rd Ward. 
In an interview, LIFO rejected the proposed ordinance as pandering to a crowd and allowing the city council to make decisions instead of the Chicago Police Department. What I don't want to do is, for the sake of pandering to a crowd, um, do something that frankly undermines the flexibility that every single department needs to have to address emerging HR issues. Three-year-old Layla Nesbitt was killed on Saturday the 23rd by a suspected drunk driver in Dalton. A family friend was driving Layla and her four-year-old sister, Amia, home near the train tracks on 138th and Cottage Grove when a vehicle slammed into them. The impact ejected both girls from the vehicle. Layla passed away from her injuries at the scene of the crash. Her sister, Amia, is currently in critical condition at Comer's Children's Hospital. The family friend who was driving the children suffered a broken leg. The person in the other vehicle, whom police believe was drunk at the time of the incident, was also reportedly in the hospital after suffering injuries. Police have stated that charges are pending. An Indiana state trooper and a woman are injured were injured in a vehicle crash. Around 2 a.m. Saturday, the 23rd, Indiana State Police were investigating an incident on 8094 in Hammond, west of Calumet Avenue. While the troopers were on the scene, a 2016 Dodge Charger traveling eastbound at high rate of speed crashed into a Hammond fire truck and black 2009 Subaru. The Subaru went out of control and struck a black 2012 Dodge Journey parked on the right shoulder. The crash pushed the Journey into the trooper, pinning him between the vehicle and a concrete barrier. The driver of the Charger, who caused the crash, attempted to flee on foot while leaving a woman seriously injured inside the vehicle. A trooper and two bystanders apprehended the suspect. According to police, one bystander placed their vehicle in front of the fleeing suspect while another exited a vehicle and pulled out a handgun, ordering the suspect to stop. The suspect did so and was apprehended. He was identified as 23-year-old Brian K. Smith from North Carolina. The passenger, only identified as a 23-year-old woman, was from Chicago Heights and was taken to Advocate Christ Hospital with serious injuries. The trooper was able to free himself from between the vehicle and the barrier and was taken to the hospital and later released. On Tuesday the 26th, a jury found 34-year-old Eduardo Count Eddie Luciano of Hammond guilty of several conspiracy counts, including murder. Luciano was found guilty of racketeering conspiracy to possess with intent to distribute cocaine and marijuana and two counts of using a firearm to commit murder. The murder charges stemmed from the June 2015 murders of 16-year-old Lauren Cavill and 33-year-old Christopher White. Neither the prosecution nor the defense denied Luciano's role as a member of the Jackson Street Latin Counts and his guilt in racketeering as a result. However, the case centered on Luciano's leadership role with his work on planning the attack on the rival Latin kings that led to the deaths of Cavill and White. According to prosecutors Luciano and three other defendants, Ivan Bola Reyes, Geron Shadow Williams, and Robert Homicide Lawyer Loya were part of the Latin Counts nation that ran out of Luciano's mother's house on Jackson Street. Reyes, Loya, and Williams pleaded guilty to racketeering conspiracy, and Reyes and Williams also admitted their involvement in the murders. They also testified against Luciano. During the trial, former Latin Counts member Israel Garcia, who has not been incarcerated, also testified to Luciano's involvement in the planning. Luciano's attorney, John Contrell, questioned Garcia's testimony and pointed to his previous testimony where he claimed no involvement. Contrell claimed Garcia was a net well-known snitch and asked why anyone would trust him with planning a shooting. Contrell argued that records showed Luciano had visited a hospital that day where his now ex-wife, Susana Gonzalez, who testified for the defense, was giving birth to their third daughter. Contrell also suggested that Israel Tank Garza confessed to involvement and blamed Luciano to avoid being charged. He also said that while Luciano was count Hefe, at one point, Reyes had been sent from Chicago to take over. According to court documents, Reyes and Castro had seen a group of 20 people at a vigil mourning the death of 23-year-old Robert Villa, who was killed in the Little Waco neighborhood the day before. They suspected one of them of being the murderer of the father of Latin Counts member Martin Furtado. They then drove to Calumet City to pick up a rifle and vehicle before returning and opening fire on the group. Members of the Latin Kings reportedly returned fire. 
Seeing the shooting, Gavillo, who was a student at Haven High School and sitting on her family's porch, had began ushering neighborhood children inside her home to avoid the gunfire. She was struck by gunfire while ushering the children and died the night of the shooting. White, who was visiting family on Beale Avenue, was struck during the shooting and after undergoing several surgeries, was rendered quadriplegic. He died on December 5, 2015, at a nursing home in Dyer. Castro, who was the alleged shooter, was killed during a burglary in December of 2015. Beale Avenue was renamed in Cavillo's honor. Luciano, Williams, Reyes, and Loya are currently awaiting sentencing. On Sunday the 31st, 25-year-old Chavez Johnson of Hammond was arrested on charges of murdering 31-year-old Aaron Hawkins from Chicago Heights. Johnson was wanted by police since March 2021 for the murder which took place in the basement of a residence in Gary. According to reports, Johnson had arrived at a gathering where his relatives planned to release balloons for his aunt Jessica Johnson's child who passed away. Witnesses say Johnson hugged several relatives before walking up to Hawkins and opening fire. Hawkins ran into a room where children were playing and tried to hide in a closet, but Johnson followed him and continued firing shots. Johnson reportedly yelled, Oh, you thought we were cool. Johnson then walked out of the room and apologized to the dead child's mother Jessica before fleeing. Jessica Johnson was murdered the following month in Chicago's Rosen neighborhood. Her boyfriend, Edward Roscoe, was charged in December in Houston for her murder. Reports say that her four-month-old baby died from a skull fracture after Roscoe dropped him in December of 2020. The relationship, if any, between Chavez Johnson and Hawkins is unclear from reports. On Thursday the 28th, a steel worker was injured at the Cleveland Hills, Indiana Harbor Mill in East Chicago. According to reports, the worker was pinned under a steel coal on a man-made peninsula in Lake Michigan. The coil reportedly rolled on the lower part of his body below the waist. Fellow union workers with United Steelworkers District 7 freed the man who was only identified as a recent high school graduate. The person was airlifted to intensive care unit at the University of Chicago Medical Center. He was last reported in stable condition with a broken femur. A child that was found wandering near the northwestern part of South Chicago alone on Friday the 29th was reunited with her family. The young girl was found around 12.45 p.m. on the 8200 block of South Jeffrey. The child was found in good health and showed no signs of abuse or neglect. The child's parents were located and she was reunited with them shortly before 10.30 p.m. No further information was provided. Two George Washington High School teachers received warnings after district representatives accused them of inappropriate behavior during protests against Reserve Management Group's planned recycling center on the east side. Chuck Stark and Lauren Bianchi, who is an advisor to the school's Environmental Justice Club, received recommendations by district leaders for firing for alleged policy violations during the protests. According to the complaint, one teacher offered incentives for students to attend protests far from school without district knowledge, with unknown chaperones, and without ensuring parental knowledge or permission. One teacher offered credit for attending protests that were important to the teacher, but not for other activities. One teacher disregarded volunteer protocol by allowing individuals to participate in unsanctioned activities, including chaperoning and serving as guest speakers in classrooms. Both teachers failed to follow student travel protocols with respect to a trip to Cambridge, Massachusetts. The teachers and union representatives denied wrongdoing. The board voted unanimously to keep the teachers who are eligible to receive tenure at the start of the school year and instead issued a warning. The warning requires the teachers to comply with student travel policies, the board's volunteer policy, and to not share student information with non-board employees without consent as part of the staff acceptable use policy. Fa failure to follow the rules could potentially lead to discipline, including termination. The Chicago's teacher union and local groups claimed the actions were political retaliation by Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot for the teachers' involvement in protesting and organizing students against the proposed RMG recycling plant. Over the weekend, the city of Whiting celebrated the annual pierogi fest. The fest, which organizers say draws over 300,000 people to downtown Whiting, celebrates Eastern European culture. This year's fest included seven different locations to watch live music with bands rotating throughout the festival. There was a parade on Friday that included a number of groups and floats. The fest hosted nearly 90 vendors that provided cultural dishes and arts and crafts. And that ends our weekly review for July 18th to August 1st, 2022. 
Thank you for joining us for this extended weekend review. Peace. You blow.